Thanks for checking out my channel. Today, we're going to answer some FAQs about the uh, Chevy MyLink radio. So stick around. Okay, first question I get often is, where do you have it unlocked? I will put a link in the description. I actually have the link in my original video. Uh, place I had it unlocked is actually local to me, but they have an eBay presence. It was 63 something to have it unlocked. Um, I had one commenter say he shipped his radio there and he had to play, pay shipping both ways to get the radio back. And he said he spent, I think like a hundred bucks to have it unlocked. So that's one thing to consider. Maybe see if there's a a uh, stereo shop in your local area perhaps or if you know somebody with a tech 2 scanner or a snap-on or somebody that can program it cheap I think the dealer might do it for like 75 bucks it's another thing to consider essentially the place I took it to they just erased the VIN out of it and as soon as I put the radio back in the car it it uh, programmed my VIN to it and it started working right away Uh, second thing is the uh, option code. So it's very important, as I'm filming now, this has the the Chevy Bowtie, and it says MyLink. Um, there are inexpensive radios that just have this Bowtie on the splash screen. They are not MyLink radios. They do not have Bluetooth. Uh, they don't have calling or streaming. I'm not sure about the backup camera. It might. But I would say that is option code UHU. And you need to stay away from those radios. Uh, I didn't think at first that the Buicks or GMCs had them, but it turns out the GMCs do. I've seen them on eBay, and they just have a plain GMC logo. They don't say IntelliLink. Um, this one is option code UG4. And mine's actually a 2013. I found later after uh, after I bought this, I, was, I, pay, I paid 40 bucks for this radio, which I harped on in my original video. That was the reason I got it, because it was so cheap. Um, starting in 2014, they included uh, text messaging, so you can read and send text messages from the radio. This 2013 doesn't have it. And then starting in 2015, they changed the option codes. And I believe this, the UG4 became the UI6. And in 2015, they took away HD radio. So, something to keep in mind. I have it on here. Um, my opinion, it makes the bass a little muddier. It's cool. It has, there's sub-channels that some of these frequencies have that you can't pull in on a non-HD. I mean... I don't know. I don't think it really adds any value. Um, now, people have been asking me about which one is the navigation radio. Um, the navigation is UGY. And I think that became the UG, UI8. Uh, let me consult my notes here. So yes, the UGY became the UI8. The UG or the UHU, the one you want to avoid is is UI2. So the um, there's also a model that has DVD, but I don't believe it plays it on this screen. I think it's for the traverses that have DVD players and the headrests. So I wouldn't recommend getting it for an Impala. Um, the other thing too, I'm not certain about is the Bose amplifier. Because the older, the ones that came in this car, there was two different radios. There was one for Bose and one for without Bose. But I think, I'm pretty sure, don't quote me on this, I'm not 100% certain, but I'm pretty sure that it doesn't matter if you have, whether you have Bose or not. I think the radio works with either or. So, 
your spid tag is what I'm talking about here on the Impala. It's down in the corner. But on the when you're looking on the auction or wherever you're looking for, make sure this has the UGY, UG4, you know, UI6, UI8 on here before you order. If it says UHU or UI2, run away from it. The other thing I've done on this car, as you'll see in my old videos, is I wired into the OnStar box or the VCIM, this right here. And this here is your satellite tuner. Um, one commenter told me that he took the VCIM and XM tuner out of like a 2016 or 2017 Traverse that had um, the 4G LTE hotspot added it to his 2009 Impala and he says now he's got the uh, Wi-Fi hotspot in the car and it shows up on the display there and he says it also added it added the Bluetooth the OnStar Bluetooth and he said now he's got that uh, the my Chevrolet app works with his car his car that was not originally equipped with any of that stuff so that's something else to keep in mind uh, the you the tuner I think is uh, UBS option code yeah UBS option code and what that does is if you get the navigation radio that UBS XM tuner will add traffic and weather to the display uh, the other thing was if you get a nav unit uh, get an antenna that came from like a Traverse or a Tahoe because the plug will fit into the radio um, and I think if you pry open this uh, panel up here you can you can um, hide it underneath here and just wire it down to your radio uh, the other thing too uh, backup camera my thing watch it won't work oh I suppose I should start the car it doesn't work with the car off um, so what I did is I kept my, my, uh, the dynamic lines that came with my own camera. The ones that are on this radio are way too high. I mean, they're cool. They turn with the steering wheel, but, uh, it was like made for the Traverse and where the Traverse's camera is mounted is above the top edge of the Impala's trunk lid. Um, I got my camera mounted on the license plate. And then um, essentially you pull your passenger side tail light out and you wire into the reverse light. There's a little grommet behind the bumper that you just poke a little hole and you can fish the wires through. And I sealed it up with some silicone on both sides to keep it from leaking. And as I showed you in my video, I ran the cable down the side of the car. Uh, someone had asked me about using navigation on their phone with this radio. I do it all the time. I have my little magnet mount. I put my phone on here. Um, I recommended to him is, you know, whether it's Google Maps or Waze or whatever, have the volume, the voice prompts go play through the phone. Because when you have the radio or a CD on, you won't hear it. The only time you'll hear it through the speakers is if you're streaming Bluetooth. And someone has, I've had a few ask me what it sounds like, like if it's worth a, a worthy upgrade. Well, let's see. Um, I wired in the uh, USB into my glove box as shown in one of my old videos. I put a <laughs> put some license, some royalty free music on here and we're going to boot it up and uh, take a listen. Um, before we do that though, one thing I need to mention, when you are looking for the, you know, when you see the, the, uh, images on eBay, make sure the radio has this icon on it and then it'll have the Bluetooth here. Some of the other ones only have like four of these icons on here and this one has six. You 
you gotta look for the Bluetooth and look for the the voice because if it just has these three it's not Bluetooth um, sometimes they'll show oh wait no we gotta go here sometimes it'll show these icons and this is a, if it says this then it's the one you want to get or it might say Pandora or Stitcher on here then you'll know it's uh, Bluetooth radio so all right let's uh, kick this up here tune I use for my channel intro so I know it's it's legal got it right from YouTube uh, I'll say this I've noticed when you're in um, FM the uh, bass is deeper or there's more bass and then when you switch over to Sirius XM or a CD it's not as it's not as muddy so, I mean, if you're mainly streaming or playing out the USB or playing CDs, I don't, I think it sounds good. It sounds kind of shitty on the FM. I mean, maybe I need to turn the bass down when I do it. I don't know. I don't listen to FM that much, so I usually don't mess with it. But, I don't know, honestly, sound-wise, I'm still rocking my stock speakers. It goes a little bit louder than the old one did. I don't think uh, if you're going for audio fidelity, you're probably you're probably <laughs> not looking at a stock style radio anyway. So, don't my reason for getting this is a it was cheap, b it's dead nuts reliable. This thing it's there's no lag no glitches it works every button command it's instantaneous so i would say is it worth it yeah if you can find one cheap enough i wouldn't pay for one of these ug4s i wouldn't pay over 100 bucks for one um there i actually i will link to a seller on ebay he might i'll see if he's still there but he was selling these radios unlocked for 199 that might be a deal they were the non-navigation ones. So, again, it's all subjective. And then the uh, fit and finish isn't. Obviously, the stock radio was perfectly square. Uh, to get this to look flush, I had to pop this, when I had the panel out, the little spring clips, I had to pull them off and then trim down the tabs and then push them back in because it pushed this in a little farther Without doing that, the panel it sticks way out. And I also added um, some washers behind here to get it to punch out a little bit. Lines up pretty good with the heater control. But other than those little gaps, it looks factory. Plug and play. Um, the camera harness was one thing I had to buy. Two wires from the um, radio harness to the OnStar box to get your voice commands to work. I have it set up where I have my work phone going to the OnStar that comes with the car, and I have my personal phone going to the radio. They live harmoniously unless you're talking on your phone that comes that you have paired to the radio. If a call comes in on the other one, that will override it. The OnStar one will override. But uh, it's really cool. The voice commands on here... You can tune different sources. You could, like XM, I was looking for a channel. I said, uh, <laughs> tune XM Yacht Rock, and it found it for me. And then you say, tune XM Octane, and it'll go to it. You don't have to say the channel number. And then you can say, like, 293.7, and then it'll go to that. Um, and then when you want to call somebody, you hit the button on the steering wheel and say, call so-and-so, and it goes right to it. You Unlike your OnStar the the factory one where you have to program it with somebody's name for it to recognize it this thing recognizes text 
which is pretty cool. So, all in all, is it worth it? Uh, if you can get it cheap enough, yeah. It's cool. J worth it just for having the Bluetooth streaming. Then you don't have to constantly plug your phone into the jack. Uh, one other thing, I got a Pixel 3a last year, and the metadata doesn't show up on here anymore. It used to show... I'm playing the USB right now, but like the elapsed time doesn't show up. These these buttons don't show up, and it doesn't show the title anymore. But you can still play and pause from the screen, so it all still works. I was on the Pixel forums trying to figure out how to get it to work, and none of the workarounds worked. Um, and to piggyback on that, there are I found a couple different forums where. People are hacking the uh, on or the uh, my links out of the Chevy Sonics and updating the firmware so you can do a, a screen mirror mirror link they call it. Uh, none of that works on here. I've seen people asking questions about how to do it on a Traverse radio, no answers. So I've kind of left that alone. Um, the other thing, someone asked me about Android Auto or Apple CarPlay. No, it does not have it. Um, there's a company that sells a module for like 549 bucks that'll add it. And I figure if that price comes down considerably, you like under 200, I would buy one. But other than that, if 549, fuck that, I'm going to go put that money towards a pioneer or a, you know, <laughs> a good aftermarket radio. So, sucks it doesn't have that, but yeah, for the price and for the reliability, I'm still impressed with it. So anyway, I think that about covers it. Any other questions, feel free to hit me up. Um, check out, I'll put the playlist to my install. It was a couple years ago. <laughs> I was not very good at filming, uh, <laughs> filming YouTube stuff. Still not, but uh, anyway. Thanks for checking out my channel. Be sure to give me a like, subscribe, hit the bell, comment, all that good stuff. Uh, thanks for visiting, and I'll see you in the next video.